space, the final frontier. When we look above at the night sky, what are we really seeing? How can we know if what we see is actually there? If we could somehow defy time and look at the object as it is at this very moment, its true form may surprise us. Together, we have hunted our first target, M101, and can now add it to our own catalog. Let's continue our journey following Charles Messier's steps and capturing all 110 of Messier's walls. Welcome to episode two of Galactic Hunter. First of all, I don't think we ever introduced ourselves. My name is Dahlia and this is Antoine. Hello. And uh, we've tallied up the votes from the comments in the last video and the unanimous winner was M57, the Ring Nebula. We want to thank everybody who viewed and commented on our last video and we really, really appreciate your support and are so grateful for it. Um, let's dive right in. We'll be on our way shortly, but first, we have to put all of our gear in the car. This is a very crucial part of our hunt for targets, because missing even one piece of equipment can be detrimental to our project. We usually have all of our gear packed up so we can pick up and go at any time. It also makes for a lot easier to put our items away, just in case we need to leave hastily due to weather or any other reason. The items we take with us, like the telescope and mount, are obviously important. But when we head out to the desert, we must also brave the elements and stingers. It honestly goes without saying, but we're heading somewhere that has no signal or food or water. If you plan to go out for an extended amount of time from your home to the wilderness, always be prepared. We pack extra clothes, a blanket, water, snacks, paper towels, and sometimes entertainment, like movies if we have a chance. Checking the weather for the area is a big deal to us and we try to stay on top of it, that way we're not caught off guard. as we progress through our little series. Uh, thankfully, people don't really come around here and we will only see them when they're parking their cars to go to their boats, if they're snake hunting, and maybe if they miss their exit at the little cliff jumping area overhead. Let's not waste any more time and let's get our equipment ready right away. As the sun is already here, it's perfect, let's do it.
The target that you guys voted for is M57, aka the Ring Nebula. Unlike the last target that we had, M101, M57 is actually in our own galaxy and is much, much, much closer than the other one. You still can go there on vacation, though. <laughs> Vega is the second brightest star in our summer night sky. It is surrounded by a huge disk of dust, showing that planets are forming around the star. Vega is almost three times bigger than our sun, and rotates so fast that it completes 12 rounds every half hour. Vega was the first star to be photographed besides the sun in 1850. Now, it is time to go to M57. We did it. And once again on the camera you can't see the image, so we're gonna have to take a long exposure. For M101, we took a one minute exposure, but for this time for M57, we'll take a three minute exposure. Super duper centered. It's Look. right where it needs to be. Let's zoom on it real quick. It's very, very noisy because it's very, very hot in here. But at least we got it. Definitely a success. So, since we're ready, let's take a bunch of pictures until the camera all the battery dies and we're all set. Our destination today is one of the tiniest objects in the Messier catalog. Let's head towards the constellation of Lyra, built from one of the brightest stars in our summer sky, Vega. The Ring Nebula was discovered in January 1779 by Antoine d'Arquier de Pellepois. A few weeks later, astronomer Charles Messier, who was unaware of Pellepois's discovery, listed the nebula in his catalog of deep sky objects as Messier 57. Charles Messier had no idea that it was a nebula and concluded that it was a group of dim stars. Because of its small size and faint magnitude, you cannot see this target with binoculars, unlike M101, which was much larger and brighter. The telescope will reveal the ring, if viewed from an unpolluted zone with no moon ruining the darkness of the sky. Unlike the Pinwheel Galaxy, which we visited during the first episode, M57 sits within our own galaxy, at only 2,283 light years away from Earth. The Ring Nebula has two obvious colors, which are the result of temperature differences. The hot inner gas is blue, whereas the cooler outer gas is red. M57 expands at a rate of at least 43,000 miles per hour, or about 12 miles per second. It will continue to expand for about 10,000 more years, before eventually becoming faint enough to merge with the interstellar medium, and completely disappear. We knew there were snakes, spiders, and scorpions crawling around our general area, but we never actually encountered one of them. Until today. This is a camel spider. It is known to chase humans both during the day and during the night. That is because camel spiders are attracted to people's shadows as well as the lights when it is dark. Shut up. Oh, I, you're the worst. I have shorts, okay? I have shorts on. <laughs> 
Who's laughing now? Ah, my eye! Yeah, he's trying. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what is it now? Is it gone? Dude, it's, it's right, right there. It's there. walking this way. What if this is the insect that makes that weird noise? What noise? Oh, I am never coming here again. Look. He's going to move and be running out of here. Take a picture of it. Oh look, something's crawling next to it. <gasps> Ew! Ew! Ah! Ew! 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 We are super, super tired. There are bugs everywhere. I want to go home. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go home and edit the stuff and see if we can wrap it up together and make it awesome. Let's go. It is now time for us to leave the starry night sky of the desert and go back to our home inside the blinding dome of the city lights. We, or mostly Antoine, are terrified of spiders. It's going to be a big challenge going back to our usual spot, knowing that those little monsters are watching us. This is our image as it is when we launch the software. Here is exactly the same thing. All we have done is crop the nebula itself to be able to focus on it during the editing. We asked the software to quickly adjust the contrast, and it revealed M57. Now the green extra is removed to let appear the red of the nebula. Here, we transform the image to be able to balance everything. We can see a small galaxy at the top right of M57. Look! Important step, the deconvolution. It reduces the size of the surrounding stars just a little to prevent them from polluting the image. Now the most fun part, enhancing the details in our target. Do not push the software too hard, otherwise, it will give us a very unrealistic feel. Do not be too greedy. Last step, a little more detail and higher saturation so that the colors are as true as possible. Here is our final image, not cropped, just for you to see the real size of M57. Here is a photo comparison with a photo of the famous Orion Nebula, M42, that we took this winter. The size difference is huge. Now comes the cropped version of our nebula where you can see many details of the expansion of the inner gas and the white dwarf at the center. We can see the white dwarf at the center of M57. When a small star runs out of fuel and dies, it expels all of its gas, and only the core, which is about the size of the Earth, remains, which gives it the name of white dwarf. This small white dot used to be a beautiful flamboyant star like our sun. And finally, here again, M57, a little bit cropped, my favorite version, because it shows the tiny nebula lost in a field of thousands of stars. M57 was the winner of the previous vote, but this time, which one will make it out of the ring? At a distance of about 500 light years only, Ro Opiuchi 
is the closest stellar nursery to Earth. This clad complex is a dark nebula around the huge orange star Antares. There is also two globular clusters, M4 in the lower center right and NGC 6144, buried behind Antares' haze. Because of its size, which is twice the size of the moon, this target will not be shot without telescope, but with a simple camera lens of 50mm. M13 is the most prominent and most known globular cluster of the Northern Hemisphere and contains over 300,000 stars. Because of how close each star is to each other, inhabitants of the millions of potential planets in the cluster have a sky filled with suns and probably don't know what night is. Messier 13 was targeted in 1974 for one of the first radio messages addressed to the possible extraterrestrial intelligent races and sent by the big radio telescope of Arecibo Observatory. Will we ever get a message back? Like the Earth, the planets in the solar system are constantly orbiting our sun. You've probably already seen several of them when you look up into the night sky, but do not realize what they actually are. By getting closer to one of the bright stars, we may discover that it is actually a planet. We are now at the end of episode 2 of Galactic Hunter. Once again, we hope you enjoyed following us to capture this tiny nebula, M57, and um, I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. Don't forget to vote for one of our other three targets. Also be sure to check out our website to see any other deep sky objects and images of panoramas in the night sky. When our sun dies, in about 5 billion years, we will become a nebula almost identical to M57. As it expands, it will become fainter and fainter until it merges with the interstellar medium and completely disappear in the darkness like we never, ever existed. <laughs>